If you throw off your hormones, you throw off the catalyst that's going to allow you to have every bit of success you want coming from working out or eating well. If your hormones are out of alignment, if your hormones are out of whack, you may as well kiss all the hard work that you've been doing goodbye because it's all going to be worthless if your body's not working the way that you need it to. So in this video, I'm really going to address two of the main things in this world that could be affecting your endocrine system. I'm talking about a couple of different synthetic ones and I'm talking about some natural ones. And I'm going to give you the breakdown of four of the biggest endocrine disruptors that are in our food supply right now. And these are things that you really can get away with just getting out of your diet altogether. So here we go. I'm going to dive right into the science of it. The first one is soy. Now I've talked about soy before, right? I've talked about how it has estrogenic properties and how it can maybe not be the best for men. But really there's two different angles that we need to look at when we look at soy. Okay. One is going to be the genetically modified side of things. Now before you turn off the video thinking that I'm going to go all hippy dippy on you talking about GMOs, I want you to hear me out because I'm not necessarily just talking about GMOs, I'm talking about soy specifically. You see, over 99% of the world's soy is genetically modified. But it's not just genetically modified to make it a bigger, more proficient plant. It's not trying to just be a better food. Okay. It's modified to have more herbicides and pesticides in it so that it can withstand harsher conditions. Well, even the National Institute of Health has actually come out and said that yes, pesticides may lead to cancer, may lead to hormonal changes, and may lead to a multitude of other things. Now, technically, correlation doesn't always equal causation. We have to factor that in. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that these GMOs intertwined with pesticides do end up making a pretty serious impact on our hormonal system. So let's forget about just general health for a minute and let's focus on the near term. The near term, if your hormones are out of whack, you're not getting what you want out of the gym. But now let's talk about the second component of soy, okay? We're talking about the phytoestrogen component. And there's two different kinds of phytoestrogens that you're going to encounter, okay? There's lignans and there's isoflavonoids. When it comes down to soy, we're predominantly talking about the isoflavonoids. Now what this is going to do is it's going to mimic estrogenic properties within the body. So what we have to look at when we look at estrogen is we have to look at the simple fact that when you consume a lot of phytoestrogens that are coming from something like soy, you're going to stimulate the endocrine system to actually feel like it has estrogen. You're going to stimulate estrogen receptors, but you're going to also trigger those estrogen receptors to create more estrogen. So the phytoestrogens, the fake estrogens that you're consuming from foods are going to bind to the estrogen receptors as if it was traditional estrogen. So it's basically tricking your body into thinking that you have more estrogen and it's going to create more. Then it's going to stimulate those receptors. It's going to cause it to create more. That's why phytoestrogens can be so dangerous. Now there's a specific study that really takes a look at this and I want to outline it for you. This study was known as the Avon Longitudinal Study of Pregnancy and Childhood. And what it was particularly looking at was the fact that about 50 out of every 8,000 boys that are born suffer from something known as hypospadias. Now what hypospadias is, is basically a disruption of the reproductive system. It's a malfunction, it's almost uh, deformities, it's basically the, the malproduction and the lack of production of the reproductive system. So whether it's going to be smaller testes or it's going to be something of the like. Basically relating to high estrogen levels and lower testosterone levels. Well, they found that those that were born with hypospadias were generally being born from vegetarian mothers that had consumed a high estrogen content, meaning they consumed a lot of soy. So what this means is that it can trickle down into the offspring, but it also means that it does affect the hormones and it definitely plays a big, big role in how men can develop because we don't want high amounts of estrogen. We want to keep that stuff under control. Okay, but enough about soy and enough about the phytoestrogens there for a second. Let's talk about omega-6s as the next one. The number two food that is killing your endocrine system is going to be the omega-6s. Okay, we're talking about the sunflower oils, the safflower oils, the vegetable oils, the canola oils, the corn oils, any of those high omega-6 foods. Here's the thing with omega-6s. Yes, they're a necessary fat. They're a polyunsaturated fat that we need for proper functioning in the body. But omega-6s compete with omega-3s. Omega-6s trigger inflammation. Omega-3s are neutral. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to have a perfect ratio and have enough omega-3s so that the body utilizes those instead of omega-6s. What's interesting, omega-3s and omega-6s compete for the same area. Okay, they are in competition with each other. So whatever one is fed more or is more prevalent is going to be utilized. If you consume more omega-6 than you do omega-3, your body's going to use those omega-6s. If you consume more omega-3 than you do omega-6, your body's going to use the omega-3s. 
So we want to make sure our bodies are using the omega-3s as much as possible because yes, the inflammation that is triggered from the omega-6s does have an effect on your endocrine system. It does have an effect on your testosterone levels. It does have an effect on your cortisol levels. It does have an effect on a lot of different hormones that really are going to disrupt the success that you have with your diet and with your workouts. So get those omega-3s in, get the omega-6s out. All right, okay, this next one that I wanna address is going to somewhat counteract what I just said. So hear me out. Okay, this one is going to be food number three and it's flax. You may be wondering, wait a minute, I thought that flax was an omega-3. Well, here's the thing. Flax is an alpha linoleic acid, an ALA, which means it has to go through a conversion process in the body to be utilized as a traditional omega-3. It has to go through a pretty rigorous process. And by and large, flax is still very estrogenic. Okay, remember when I was talking about soy, I said there's two different phytoestrogens you need to be concerned with, lignans and isoflavonoids. Well, soy was an isoflavonoid, flax is a lignin. Okay, it reacts in the body a little bit differently, but it still mimics and emulates estrogen in the body and still stimulates the estrogen receptors to produce more estrogen and kill your testosterone levels. But I've got a little bit of science for you to back it up. There was a 1998 study that was published in the Journal of Nutrition. Now, mind you, the Journal of Nutrition is a pretty darn big publication, a pretty big journal. And what this study looked at was at rats. Now, hear me out entirely on this. Okay, what they did is they looked at rats that were pregnant and then lactating. And what they did is some of the rats they gave a 0% flax diet to, some of the rats they gave a 5% flax diet to, and another chunk of the rats they gave a 10% flax diet to. Well, what they were monitoring was what were the effects of the offspring. Did they have estrogenic tendencies? Did they have hormonal imbalances? What was the birth weight, et cetera, et cetera? Well, the cool thing was the zero and the 5% group saw pretty much no change, okay? Normal birth weights, normal hormone values, all of that. But for those that consumed the 10% flax, their offspring had decreased birth weight, very skewed hormonal values, and the offspring, as they matured, ended up showing strong estrogenic properties, okay? This meant overdeveloped ovaries in the females, it meant overdeveloped prostates in the males, also meant early puberty in the males, and also meant that things were really thrown off altogether. The males were showing these strong estrogenic properties, like the inability to lose weight and constant fat accumulation, particularly around the midsection. So there you have it, estrogen, fat weight, estrogen, inability to lose weight, estrogen, flax, estrogen, soy, we don't want it, okay? Plain and simple. Now for this last food, I'm gonna rain on your parade. All of you that are choking down whey protein constantly, I've got some bad news for you. You probably wanna 86 the dairy at least a little bit, simply because dairy is not always what it's cracked up to be. Now with your whey protein, you might be okay because the caseinate levels in it aren't gonna be super, super high, but if you're consuming a casein protein or you're eating a lot of cottage cheese, you wanna throw that stuff in the trash right now. Why? Because it contains something known as BCM7. BCM7 is contained in casein proteins, which are hard to break down and inflammatory in and of themselves, but they do something pretty unique within the body. They cause a pretty dramatic hormonal disturbance that is going to throw off a lot of different hormone values in your body. But to add insult to injury, they're also going to spike up your levels of insulin-like growth factor quite dramatically. Now, if you know the muscle world and you know the whole world of building muscle, you know that IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor, is not always bad. It's necessary for a growth hormone. It's necessary for insulin to really do its job and help us build muscle. But too much of it, especially with someone that's not actively trying to build a ton of muscle, it's really gonna cause a problem and trigger a lot of additional inflammation that's gonna have a superseding effect over your testosterone and estrogen much worse than what you would ever have an effect of when it comes to muscle building through insulin and growth hormone. I know that was a mouthful, but basically all I'm trying to say is the hormones that are added in milk are going to throw you off. It doesn't matter if your milk says it's RBST free, it doesn't matter how organic or raw it is, there are still a lot of hormones in milk that we have to be cognizant of. But that being said, if you're gonna go for milk, go for raw goat's milk whenever possible, lower lactose, lower casein rates, and also no BCM7, that's gonna help you out a lot. So now that I've rained on your parade with the four foods I don't want you to eat, I've totally ruined soy, I've totally ruined dairy, I've totally ruined flax, and I've ruined the safflower oils and the canola oils that you were probably cooking with, let me go ahead and tell you that by cutting these things out, your life is gonna be happier. Inflammation's gonna be lower, your hormone values are gonna be better, and you're gonna feel better, and you're gonna get about 10 to 20% more out of your diet right out the gate simply by getting rid of these foods. So I will see you in the next video, and make sure you comment which videos you wanna see in the future. We'll see you soon.